Bible supposed to be read precept upon precept. Very little, very little to get the understanding. Christianity, religion told you just read the whole Bible and pray on it. No, that ain't how you do it. God got instructions on how to read. So we're supposed to give a warning. We're not judging you. We're warning you. But have we seen any change? Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhoods? What's your name, brother? Robert? Are you a so-called African-American, Robert? What are you? Huh? So what is the truth according to the Bible? So we should have no difference 
and understanding what the truth is according to the Bible. No, according to the truth of the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy verse 7 and verse 6. Chapter 7 verse 6. You said we're niggas and spits according to the Bible? Bring it out. What? How do you preach it in church? We're going to see what the Bible really says about us. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. But now, us in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Bible said we are holy people unto the Lord of our God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So Robert, you're saying that the Bible had is taught to us that we're niggas in spits, that we're nothing, right? Well, the Bible, when we're reading it, it says that we're holy unto the Lord our God. It's who taught you the Bible, sir. Yeah, I'm saying if you read the Bible, you're a lot of people. I know how to the truth. All right, so according to the Bible, what all? According to the Bible, what all? We're the chosen people. So we're not niggas in spits. I know that. You know that. Okay. All right, so you say you know the truth, right? Yeah. What is the truth? All right, but yeah, that's part of it. But what comes with that? We, I don't know. Let's get it. Psalms chapter, you got it. Psalms chapter one nineteen verse one forty two. Psalms chapter one nineteen verse one forty two. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy what? Thy law is the truth. That is the truth of God. Because with your nationality comes the laws. That's with right. the laws come with your nationality. Yeah, it right. comes back and forth. So watch this, right? Let's get, let's get Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Because yeah. you know you're Israel. So you know what comes with it, right? Before we get that, let's get uh, 10 and 12. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Because that's something that's required of you to do. Just because you know you're Israel, it don't stop there. There's more that comes with it. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Hello. And now Israel. He's speaking to you, Robert. Now Israel from the tribe of Benjamin. Read. What do the Lord thy God require of thee? Uh -huh. But to fear the Lord thy God. So you have to fear God. Read on. To work in all his ways. In all his ways. Not some, in all of God's ways. Read. And to love the Lord thy God uh -huh. with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Uh -huh. To keep the commandments. So he summed all that up to fear, to love, to walk. What he want us to do? To keep the commandments of the Lord. So we have to keep God's commandments. So let's go to the commandments because you know you're an Israelite. You know that. So let's go to Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. What's required of you is that you have to keep God's commandments. So Robert, what are you supposed to do? So we're going to learn some of God's commandments. All right? So let's read that. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head. So command it. Don't make boldness upon your head. So Michael Jordan, he's on. Make boldness upon your head. A bald head. So you're not supposed to bald your head. That's a commandment of God. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So you might have not known this. Yeah. But in your step to repentance, you have to keep a beard on your face. That's it right. says make no what? Make no. They shall not shave off yeah. the corner of their beard. So you shouldn't be shaving off the corners of your beard. Come That's over here. Right. Robert, come over here. I want you to see something. That's right. I want you to see something. You see the corner of my beard? You see this all I can grow, right? Yeah. You see I'm cutting it off? No, so but this is an example for you. So if you grow this little bit, let it let it stay there. You can trim it, but don't completely mar it off. Yes, you understand right. that? So the corners of your beard, you should let you should let it grow. You can trim it down. There's no problem with that. But you cutting it, this morning off your face, that is a sin according to God. Yes, so right. You gotta understand that. There's more in it. Read on. Okay. You want the this more the, the cutting in the flesh. So remember, there's no bonus upon your head. No shaving off the corners of your beard. There's one more in that. No, make any cutting in the flesh. So that's no tattoos. That's true. You'll see some of the brothers with tattoos. Once we found out we were Israel, 
was like, oh, we can't get those no more. Right. The commandments say no tattoos. Right. So we can't go and take it off because that put be putting cutting in your flesh to remove them. So we stopped doing them at all. You understand? Right. So these are commandments you must start applying because that's what's required of you as an Israelite. Right. You know that. So in order to, for you to receive eternal life, let's get that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Read it out. Jesus Christ? Yeah. All right, the one with... That, which one? Which one is Jesus Christ? I, I have to make sure. The one on the left? Yeah. But, uh, on your left, right? Far left? Yeah, his, his right there. All right, all praises, all praises. That's the, right. The, the, the comely brother. Yeah. All right, all praises. We're on the same page, brother. We're on the same page. All right, let's read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Hello. And behold, one came and said unto them, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Woo! That's what everybody go to church on Sunday for. Oh, yeah. To keep not keep God's commandments, but to have eternal life. Because they don't go to church to keep God's commandments. They pay time for that. Look, I'm fine with what I'm doing, Pastor. As long as I pay this 10%, oh, I'm saved by the grace and blood of God. That's all. But watch this. Let's see what Jesus, the Messiah, or Christ say to do. Read. And he said unto them, Why callest thou me good? For there is none good but one. That is God. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life, so he says, if you want eternal life, he's about to answer the question in the Holy Bible. Read. Keep the commandments. It's no difference from what's required of you. Right, right. You have to keep God's commandments for you to receive eternal life. That's right. So you got to understand. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Remember what, we, what you brought up. You said, yeah, we know the truth. We know we're the Israelites. Now you know we have to keep God's commandments. But you said in the Christian churches, they don't teach that. They teach that, you know, the niggas just spits. Because there is, there's no change in the Christian church. So let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Because I want you to know how we got the Christian church. Read. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is future prophecy. He's saying if you will not listen, if you will not hearken to do the commandments of God, this will happen to you. It shall come to pass. Future tense, read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded this day. Sister, this goes out to you too, sis. What's your name? Kate. Kate? Kate? Come forward, Kate. come forward. You gotta go? But li listen, listen if you can, read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So curses are gonna happen to us. If you see yourself on the sun, sis, curses are gonna happen to our people That's if we right. disobey God's commandments. Right. Like we read in Leviticus 21 and verse five, you've been shaving off the corners of your beard. You not knowing this, that means a curse has been placed upon our people. You have to understand that. So watch this, right? Go to verse 48. Because in us committing sin and us breaking these commandments, curses happen to us. One of the curses is this, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies. So we will have to serve our enemies. If you see this sign, Robert, this happened to us. Right, this right, is not right. fairy tale. This book is life. This actually happened. So he says, you, you would what? Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies. You will serve your enemies, read. Which your Lord shall sin against thee. So God sent them against us. If you're fighting against God, do you think you can win against him? So he says he's going to send our enemies against us. Read on. In hunger. When you're hungry. McDonald's, Burger King, who owned those establishments? The slave plantation. The slave plantation. Everything you can name that you have to go get food from. Your enemies own it. Read. That's right. And in trust. Anything you need to drink, your enemies own it. That's right. Zephyr Hills, Aquafina, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, everything. You have to go to your enemy to get it. Read. And in nakedness. Everything you have on to them shades on, brother. You have to go get from your enemy. Read. That's right. And in want of all things. In want of what? Of all things. Now your religion right, right. is in one of all things. That's where you get Christianity from. Yes, right. That's where you get your Christian church from. Right. Islam. Right. That's where you get it from. Right. So it's not the Bible. You get it from your enemy. That's right. You got to understand that. So we are. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Man, the Bible is real descriptive. The people who put yokes of iron upon our neck are our enemies according to the Bible. That's right. So all we have 
have to look at is our history. Who the heck put yokes of irons on our neck? That's what you gotta ask yourself. Once you know that, you understand, hold up. These people don't want the best for me. They won't tell me the truth. Well, let's go to verse 64. This is a, in the process of us breaking God's commandments, this is what happened to our people. Let's read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. 64. 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Now, you got to ask yourself this, Robert. Everybody who's listening, what people on this earth were scattered amongst all nations on the earth. Who did that happen to? Did that happen? Robert, did that happen to the Chinese people? How about the Japanese? Can you name somebody that happened to? It's the Jews Exactly. Did it happen to the Jewish people? Now, nah. watch this. Did it happen to the Haitian people? Did it happen to the African Americans? No. It happened to the so-called Jamaican and West Indian people, right? Get out. It happened to the Hispanic people. Get out. It happened to the Native Americans. Right. So what does that tell you about them? Break it out. That they're the Israelites. They're your brothers and sisters. That's your nation of people. Right. You gotta understand that. Finish that off. From, from the end of the earth, even unto the other. Read that again from the top. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people uh -huh. from the end of the earth, even unto the other. So he from one end of the earth, even unto the other. History taught us that we were taken from where? From the west coast of Africa, right? That's on one side of the earth, right? Right? From one side of the earth, and we were brought to the Americas, to the other side. So that's history that happened to us. Remember, the spirit of the Bible bear witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. The words of this book is telling us who we are. You got to understand that. Continue reading. And then, and once we got off them slave ships, once we got to the other side of the earth, what happened? That shall serve other gods. That's where you get this image from. That's, right. That's another God. Right. That God is not found in the Bible. That's right. That Christ is not found in the Bible. That's right. Anybody who's watching this, anybody who's listening to this, this is not found in the Holy Bible. Right. You gotta understand that. Once you've been deceived by this, you've been deceived by the whole world. You don't understand it. That's right. You gotta understand that. So read that again. And there, that shall serve other gods, uh -huh. which neither thou nor thy father have known. So our fathers haven't known this. What those, are, what those, those other gods come with? Read. Even wood. Stop right there. Wood. That Jesus Christ. That Caesar bullshit. That's oh, for real. That image of the beast comes with what? When, it, when, you, when you look at Christianity, what they always portray? A cross. Yeah. That cross is made of what? Steel? Wood. That's right. So he says you shall serve other gods. Wood and what else? And stone. Now, two, that's two major religions. The Bible is really descriptive. That's right. That's right. Two major religions on this earth. Right. Christianity, which falls under the umbrella of Catholicism. Right. And you have Islam. That's Muslims. Right. Our people are plagued with those two religions. Those are the two major religions on this earth. Muslims come from the Arabs. They had us in slavery before the Caucasian race and the right. the sub-Saharan slave trade. That's, right. that's history that's not taught to us on Black History Month. Right. They don't tell you about that. They only tell you about they only tell you about the slave trade that happened across the transatlantic. Martin Luther King, the right. civil rights right. movement. But they'll tell you what, what happened before we were sold to them. You gotta understand. You gotta understand the curses will be taken from one side of the earth even to the other. During that process, we will learn other religions. Right. We will serve other gods. Right. So we'll know that the things that we were taught are not the truth. That's you got to understand that. That's why the Bible said the truth shall set us free. They say you want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a book. That's it's not going to read. That's why we've been, so we've been so disconnected from it. So watch this, right? How did we get on this side of the earth? Boats. On boats. And you know that's prophesied in the Bible. By ship, the wrong bank ship. Exactly. So you know that. So we know that to receive eternal life, what must we do? To receive eternal life, what must we do? Huh? To get eternal life, what must we do? We gotta go back to our roots, which is what did Christ say? Keep the commandments. That's right. That's what he said. Keep the commandments. Watch this. First Kings chapter eight, verse. 46. Because King Solomon, our forefather, prophesied what would happen. And he said when this happens, he gives us instructions on what to do. 
That's in the New Testament. Jesus is repeating the same thing that we was reading in the Old Testament, scattered everywhere. He's That's repeating it. the same thing over and over again. Right. The New Testament ain't no different than the Old Testament. It's right. just a continuation of what was written That's to true. happen. That's why he said the same thing we just read in Deuteronomy 28. Read it again. And they shall fall by the edge of the sun and shall be led away captive into all nations. That's us. That's the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Jamaicans, Haitians, we do And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles. Jerusalem shall be trodden down, destroyed by the Gentiles. So Christ is telling you that the real Jews were going to be scattered and then the people that came in were going to be the Gentiles. That's right. Calling themselves Jewish. That's right. They telling you who they are in their name, right? Like if I say my shirt is purple-ish, you be like, okay, well it's not really purple, but it's something like that, right? They are proclaiming or claiming to be you. Because you've been scattered all over the earth. You being called, where you, where's your father from? So-called African-American, Haitian, Jamaican, African, America. Because they over here, they being called American blacks. They being called American blacks. Looking at women walk past because that lust inside of them just can't let it go. Right. That's going to get you caught up. Christ talked about that. Yeah. Got to break that spirit, brother. Read up. Yeah. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So he said the Gentiles are going to live in, in Jerusalem until the times have passed, right? Until a certain number of years go by, a certain number of prophecies have been fulfilled. Now let's read some of these. Read up. And there shall be sign in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress among nations. So he said it's going to be signs in the sky and it's going to be distress on the earth among nations. Do you pay attention to the news at all, Jeffrey? World news. I ain't talking about the six o'clock news. Because six o'clock news only tell you that Jerome just killed Tyrone on the block for selling drugs. But world news is talking about everybody on the earth is in the midst of some kind of war. Syria is in war. Iraq, Iran is in war. America's beefing with Russia. All over the earth, nations are displa uh, what does it say right there? I'm perplexed right now. Why does this keep happening? Why can't we have peace? We are. We perplexity, the uh, sea, and the wave warring. We do Men's hearts failing them for fear. Uh -huh. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Uh -huh. For the powers of heaven shall be checked. We do and, th and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. So he said, when you see the nations are perplexed and fighting against each other, then you're going to see the Son of Man, Jesus the Christ, coming out the clouds. And these movies, like Avengers, and all of these movies, where do they keep saying people are going to come from to take over the earth? Where do they keep saying that? Where are they coming from? Coming from space. You know? Why do you think they keep making movies like that over and over and over again? Because right. they done ran this and they know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the second right. coming of Christ is coming. Right. Now read on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. That's why you see all these movies with these big old chariots like, uh, did you see Independence Day 2 on, on number one? If you watch, go, go watch the movie when you get a chance. Independence Day 2 just came out last year. It is a humongous spaceship where everybody on the face of the earth can you know? see it. Jesus Christ just said what? Verse 27. Uh, verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and glory. That's the, the, the so-called UFO comes out of a cloud and the whole world is able to see it. Right. Where do you think they got there from? Read the Bible. That's now read out. And when this thing begins to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head for your redemption, Jordan. So he said, when you see these signs on the earth, when you see these nations going against each other, back to back before 17, I forget the thought. When you see this stuff happening on the earth, 
These are signs to let you know I'm on my way. That's right. Nation against nation. And, and it's been wars for all time. But right now, what do we see is war after war after war. It's always a problem. Obama had beef with uh, the Middle East. As soon as he got out of office, Donald Trump got beef with the Russians. Right. Got beef with Iran. All the time. This is why Jesus said what? Matthew 4. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is coming near. I told you, when you see these signs, it's on its way, it's time to repent. And you, Jeffrey, like I said, you said twice, right? You don't see those. Go to uh, Job chapter 30, I think it is. Go to this real quick. I'm going to prove to you where, it's, where God says, I'll speak to a man twice to call him to repent. Let me get this for you. Get that for me, because he ain't got the same one I got. Bring it up. Job 30. Go to Job 30. Now, uh, I, I got to see it. I got to see it. Uh, nobody's going to know exactly right now I didn't tell you what time what day I didn't say that Jesus said when you see these signs know that I'm on my way Just look up for your redemption draw up that your redeeming is drawing yeah, you see this in Cleveland, now you're down here in Miami. You're from the north down to the south. And remember, it's your second time. Remember I said God has said he'll speak to a man twice, right? Read that, Job chapter 30, uh, what are we at? 33 and verse 14. You got it? 33, 14. Job chapter 33, verse 14. Listen up, Jeffrey, because this is God calling you right now to repent. For the kingdom is at hand. Read that. For God speaketh once, yet twice. How many times does God speak? Yeah, twice. How many times you say you don't see us? Two times. The Bible is a true book. Our people got to stop playing with God because God is real. You just can't see him in your everyday life. So you say, I'm cool with my sin because he ain't killed me yet. But he reach out to you. Read it from the top again. For God speaking once. God speaks once to you in Cleveland. Read again. Yeah, for God speaking once. Yeah, twice. He spoke to you the second time down here in Miami. Right. And you just happened to walk past when we going over the topic of repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. Jeffrey. That's right. That's right. Read on. Yet man perceive it not. Now man perceive it not. They're like, oh, I heard it twice. Damn, they everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha, let me go on about my day. Let me try to get my money. Uh, that you don't even realize that this is God calling out to you through the prophets. That's right. He's, he's, he's reaching out to you. Right on. In a dream, uh -huh. in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falling upon men, it's slumbering upon the bed, uh -huh. then it opened the ears of men and sealed their instruction that, they may, that he may withdraw men from his purpose uh -huh. and hide white from men. He, he keep it back in his soul from the pit. So God is calling out to you these two times like this, Jeff, because he's trying to keep you from the pit. You know what the pit is? It's called six feet under. The grave. He's trying to keep you from that. Now this is what this is what baffles me as me. God will continually call out to us over and over again. And we know, oh yeah, I know I'm Israel. Yeah, I know we the real Jews. But what you doing with it? What are you doing with that knowledge? We don't do that. Give me James 4 and 17. So once God calls out to you like that, and he gives you that little bit of understanding, because there's billions of people, of your people, on this side that don't know who they are. They right. call themselves all of these slaves that you just happen to know you from the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel. God spoke to you twice. Give me that James 4 and 17. Now, how does God now look at you, Jeffrey? Because now he look at you different. Like, if you got kids and you tell them, don't go outside, I'm going to whoop that butt. If they go outside the first time, you say, okay, they didn't know. I can't punish them like that. But if they do it the second time, what happens? That is a butt whooping. James 4 and 17. Chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good. God says, therefore to him that knoweth to do good. Read on. And do it not. And don't do it. To him. It is sin. It's what? It is sin. God says, now you walking in the midst of sin. Okay, the first time, you didn't know. I know you was walking around sleep. You've been lied to by the white man. He told you your God was white. But I, I called you the first time. You knew after that time. The second time, you see, you see the prophets. 
What's gonna happen? Now, okay, you know, Jeffrey, now it's tallying up. You're in the midst of seeing. Cause you know what, you ain't changed? Okay, now, now, I got some. Now, Romans 6.23. He said, if you, you know to do good and you don't do it, God says you're in the midst of sin. You know? What is the payment for sin, Jeffrey? What does God do when we're in the midst of sin to us? Because we his people, right? Yeah. Let's see. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Is what? Is death. Is what? Is death. So God says, if you're walking in the midst of sin and I done spoke to you twice, What's waiting on you? Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. That's the reality of it. Give me, uh, uh, give me that in Romans 7. That's the reality of what we do. Our people think we just come out here week to week and we just, you know, we some crazy dick folks read it out of Bible that it done been translated, it done been this, it done been that. It was written by a white man, he was gay. But I can read it here where God says if you're in the midst of sin, you're going to get killed. I can look on the news and see he's dying at alarming rates. Who is it? It's us. And specifically, it's your black man. Because we in the midst of sin when God's calling out to us. Right. So it said to him that knows to do good and don't do good. To him is sin. Do you know what is good? What's good according to God, not us? What's good according to God? Follow the word. Follow the word. Okay, let's see what God says exactly so your conscience can be clear and our hands can be clean that we told you what was good. And if you didn't do it from the moment you left here, now you know where you stand with God. But the good thing about it is with us as a people, God said you can change at any moment and I forgive all of that. That's right. So let's read that what's good. Well, yeah. chapter 7 verse 12. Wherefore, the law, the what? The law, the what? The law uh -huh. is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. It's what? And good. The law is what? Holy. And what else? Just. Uh huh. And what we just read it again? Yes. Yeah. And good. Read it again for it. <laughs> Wherefore, the law is holy, uh -huh. and the commandment holy, and just. And good. That's right. That's what's good. James 4.17. The laws of God are good. The laws of God will keep you from getting cut down in the street. Right. The laws of God will keep you from smoking cigarettes and giving yourself cancer. Right. The laws of God are good to keep you from being a drunk. Right. Because it tells you how to do all of it. The laws of God will tell you how to save some money in your pocket because it tells you, you to keep the Sabbath day holy. You ain't supposed to spend no money today. Die. If you stop spending money for one day, guess what? You got a little bit more money in your pocket. We already broke as a people. And one God. day out the week, we ought to be like, God said don't spend no money today? Shoot, I'm on board with that day. Let me save a little bit of money. Thank you, God, for giving me that day. That's right. So it says the law is good. James 4, 17. James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it not, to him it is sin. So if you know to do good, to keep the laws, and you don't do it, God says now you're in the midst of sin. And if you're in the midst of sin when it comes to God, he's going to eventually put you to what? No good, but do you say The payment of sin? Death. You see how easy that is? The Bible is easy to understand. The problem is, we don't read it. And when we do read it, you don't know God's talking to you. So you read it, think he's talking about somebody else, and, and then we keep on getting gunned down and killed. Once you know it's talking about you, now it takes on a different purpose. Okay, God said he's killing people and don't keep them laws. Right. And he learns to be laws, because I ain't trying to die at a young age. That's right. I get pulled over at any time. I could be going from Miami back to Cleveland to visit somebody, and somebody in Cleveland got beef with me and find me and kill me. Bring it up. Just out of nowhere. Cause I don't know, you know, I lived that life, you know, I left, I might have left Cleveland because you know it was some beef up there, I'm trying to start over down here. You might come down here and that same trouble follow you down here. You can't escape from God when you're in the midst of sin. That's right. Cause the whole earth is sees. He sees all of us and everything we do. So he says, if you keep these laws, which is good, he will give you life. Yeah. Now, Officer Logic, give him, let this brother give you some basic commandments before you go. So, you don't die. 
because we don't want that because the guy can send the deaf angel and say, okay, set this up here, set it up there, set it up about three years from now. Give me, that's it, three years. That's, that's, a, that's all the time he got left. And cause something to happen, he walk out across the street and get hit. Three years ago, you heard the word and didn't change. Now you go meet your maker and he go ask you, why you change when I called out to you those two times? But I spoke to you in Cleveland, I spoke to you in Miami. And they explained it to you, but you didn't change. Why not, Jeffrey? You want to have to answer to God. That's right. And you think he's taking any excuses? No, no, no not at all. <laughs> he ain't trying to hear that. So let him give you some basic, easy commandments that you can apply right now, all right, to live. Go ahead. Yeah, the officer spoke well in the spirit. So the commandments, so we're going to give you one commandment that can help you remember to keep the rest of them. Let's go, Numbers 15. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. Which you are, read. And beat them, that they make them bridges in the border of their garments. Now, if you look all around us, the men in purple shirts, you'll see fringes at the borders of our garments. These are fringes. We are. Who are their generation. It says throughout your generation. You have children? So when you do have children, they also have to have them. But for you, to start off so you can be that example for them, put fringes at the borders of your garments. Yes, These are fringes. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. You put a ribbon of blue upon it. As you can see, now all the men that have purple shirts. Now if you don't have fringes, you can always start small. These you can put a border of blue and then cut up the bottom. But why is it for? Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. That's so you can look the at your fringes. Whenever you're going off, I have to keep these commandments That's in order to live, to not be put to death. You got to understand that. Read on. And that ye seek not after your own heart. So you seek not after your own mind. Oh, I could go ahead and buy on the Sabbath. You gotta understand that, read on. And your own eyes, uh -huh. after which you used to use to go hard. So when you used to break God's commandments. So these fringes, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a stop sign. No, I can't do that. You gotta understand that, all right? Another commandment. Let's go to Leviticus 21 and verse five. Read on. Cause you gotta understand. There's, there's a lot of commandments, but they're not hard at all. They're not hard at all. They're easy. The people that, people that say you can't keep them, they never try at all. Read. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Is that a problem with you? To make baldness upon your head? It's to make baldness upon your head. Is it hard for you not to do that? To, to get a bald head? Is it hard for you? To go to, when you go to the barber, do you ask them to give you a bald head? So it's not hard at all. Because when you go when you go to the barber, you say, give me a one, give me a two, give me a fade. Don't make my head bald. That's what God says, don't get no bald head. Read on. Read it up. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So your beard, as you can see, I've been growing. It says don't shave off the corners of your beard. So you gotta let your beard grow. You can trim it, cut it down, but don't take it off your face. Like you see every man up here, you take around it. Read on. No, make any cutting in the flesh. So what, 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 what things that we put on our body right now that cuts our flesh? Read on. Tattoos, exactly. Right. So God says no more tattoos. Right. You understand that? So he says, don't put baldness upon your head, don't shave off the corners of your beard, and no tattoos. You understand that? Now watch this. Let's, you got something else? Let's go to 20 and 8. Great. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. You know, remember the Sabbath day. So there's commandments within the Sabbath day. No buying, no selling, what? no cooking, what? no working. What? You got to understand that. There's a lot of commandments on the Sabbath day, but they're easy to keep. That's you got to right. understand that. Congregate together with your brothers and sisters on the Sabbath day. You, know, you will learn more on the farm, on the flyer. Now watch this. Let's get Leviticus 11 and verse 7. Well, this is something man. easy for you to learn, something you could apply. Because this is this is in mostly of all our food, especially in breakfast. You might have this this morning. Read on. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. Well, you know. And the swine. You know what 
the swine is, you know another name for swine? Pig, pork, That's pork right. chop, That's bacon. Right. Man, some of these sausages, some of these things that you eat in McDonald's Burger King has pork in it. Yeah. You gotta understand, read on. Though he divided the hoop and it be clothed footed, yet he chew it not the cord. It is unclean to you. So it is unclean to you. God says don't eat it. Don't eat the swine. Don't eat the pig. Right. You gotta understand that. So watch this. Go down to verse 9. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 9. Mm -hmm. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, in the rivers, them shall ye eat. You eat crab? You eat crab? Lobster shrimp? Tastes good? God says don't eat it. That's right. No, God says don't eat them at all. That's right. He said, yeah, fish, fish with fins and scales. Really? That's the only thing we can eat in the water. Right. You got to understand that everything else, no matter how good it tastes, that's getting you closer to death. That's right. Now, even though Jesus came, right? Uh, even though Jesus came, Bible right? Bible is 17. Yeah. Even though Jesus came and died in the world, you still got to follow him. Yeah, watch this. Because the only commandment that was done away with was the sacrificial law. Because remember, there was sin. If you committed, you would be put to death on that spot. Now, Christ died in order for you to repent from those sins. To not be put to death. Watch this. Matthew 5 verse 17. Matthew 5 verse 17. Out of his own mouth, he's going to tell you he didn't come to do away with those commandments. Read on. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not. Think what? Come to destroy the law. Read. Oh, the prophets. What would the prophets have said? Moses, if what was in the first five books, you're reading about the prophet Moses. He says, thou shalt not eat, and what you can eat. Read on. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he ain't come to destroy, but to fulfill. Him dying on the cross, he fulfilled that. That's in order for us to repent. You gotta understand that. That's all on that. Read. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass. One chat. So if the heaven is still here, the earth is still here. Read. One chat or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So one chat or one tittle from the law has not been destroyed. You gotta understand that. So everything in the Bible, everything in the commandments still stand except for the sacrificial law. That's right. You understand that. So remember, you gotta keep a pair on your face. No bald head. Right. No um no buying selling on the Sabbath. Right. You gotta congregate. Right. Let me give you one more because uh, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 18. Because you gotta understand this, brother. You got to understand this. You coming from the children of Israel. This is what's in store for you. Read. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the sins of the most high shall break the kingdom. That's right. And possess. The kingdom forever, right. even forever and ever. So the kingdom of heaven is going to belong to us forever. That's uh, right. In order for you to get eternal life, you have to keep God's commandments. That's and you will be there forever. That's right. Psalms 148 and verse, verse 14. So you can understand who the saints are. The saints ain't nobody who can convert. You have to be born a saint. But what comes with the saints is keeping God's commandments. That's you have right. to understand that, read. Psalms chapter 148 verse 14. He also exhort the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. Of all his saints, who are they? Even of the children of Israel. That's right. All people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Be happy for that you're an Israelite, because the kingdom belongs to you. That's but right. in order to take it, you have to keep God's command. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC 
will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.